hey, I get it, Marvel development is cool, but you're gonna need some kind of dedicated environment. If you were hanging around in the past videos, you may observe that I am a huge Windows fan. I love doing exploits on Windows, write code on Windows, do Maldef on Windows because most of the Maldef tools are actually designed for Windows and the Windows itself has a powerful ID in the face of Visual Studio. Now that's nice, it works, you can tweak all the compiler settings, it works right off the bat, but sometimes that's not enough. There are cases where you would need to compile your payloads directly from Linux environment because maybe the transferring process would be so much harder or, I don't know, you get lost of your code snippets on your main Windows machine. Never mind, that's not important, what is important is that it's possible and in this video we're gonna showcase how. Now let me showcase how that's been done. Here on my virtual environment we have two machines which are important. First is the guy where we're gonna actually compile the payloads and of course our famous and important command VM where we're gonna test the compiled payloads. Now first we're gonna go over code1.c which is the very very standard code just printing a high statement inside the main method. It's a very simple code in it, and it's including just one library. Now the libraries are important because sometimes between cross compilation different libraries may have different dependencies and that's something that you need to research on your own. Now for instance the file is in the code is inside the file called code1.c and if we do that with gcc and just compile code1.c it's going to give us the linux alternative for a binary file which is if we run file against it we're going to see if it is elf 64 bit executable now if i i can run the file with a.out and by the way a.out is the default output file name extension if you don't specify anything in your gc parameter and as you can see it works quite nice but now it's a problem because we cannot convert this file to an exe or if we transfer this elf binary windows would not be able to actually execute it because it's not a windows binary that's the magic of the c language and the gcc because based on your operational system it does different things and also one additional magic of the, of the gcc is that we can actually cross compile if we do x86 and do type a bunch of times we can see a lot of programs now these are all included inside the kali linux by default but if they're not you can install them by doing sudo apt-get install gcc now as mentioned before if i will if i run x86 dash and then you do type a bunch of times we can see a lot of programs and the one i'm interested in that is actually this one right here so we have a gcc we have a version of gcc and we also have a g plus plus if we want to actually compile c plus plus files now in that case this one would, would do the job perfectly it's a windows x64 version keep in mind that you need to be aware of the targeted architecture in that case it's windows 64 and then after i run this command it's standard gcc command i can do code 1.c and if i do ls now we can see that we have a.exe and a.out now the a.out is from our previous compilation it has nothing to do with the command we ran just now but we have an exe file and if we do cat a.exe we can indeed see that it's a pe or portable executable suitable for windows let's transfer it and see if we can execute it now i have downloaded the a.exe file and if i execute it inside the console we can see that it successfully works now, as I mentioned before, here comes the twist. Based on your program, based on how complicated it is, and based how on what libraries you're gonna need to include inside your program, a different settings might be needed. For instance, if you want to com compile a DLL instead of an exe, you need to specify the dash shared option to the min w parameter. Now let's observe some other examples and to see what's the difference. I want to pause the video just to say massive, massive thanks to my Patreon sponsors. You have no idea how much that means to me. If you also have further appreciation to my work, don't hesitate to become a patron where you're going to get added to my sponsorship repository with a lot of projects inside. I'm sure you're going to find them useful. Thanks so much and moving on. Now to showcase one a little bit more etched example, 
I have the following code. This code is brought by my offensive C++ repository and all it does, it uses HTTP slash S protocol to stage different payload. What that means is that you can host a payload on a HTTP or HTTPS server, run this code and the remote client will automatically during runtime read the remote payload and then possibly you can force it to execute it. If you want to learn more on how that technique actually works, you can click on the top right corner where I have posted a video about this technique before. Now, we're not going to walk that much into the code, but one that stands out and one super important thing for our case is the usage of specific libraries. In that case, we're going to need the Windows at H, the TL, TL help 32 winhttp.h, WinInternal.h, and so on and so on and so on. Keep in mind that most of the libraries are automatically resol resolved by the MinkW compiler. What that means is that the MinkW has already stored the version of these libraries inside its code base, so whenever we need it, it can just go there and use it, which is super nice. As mentioned, we are gonna walk into the code, it's in my offensive C repository. Make sure to check it on your own, and I just make a super super little modification because it's in original in C++ format. I translate it into C by using free instead of delete and also by doing malloc instead of new. Now with that being said, I can try to compile that now. So I can try x8, x86, the same GCC command. Now the file is called call2. If I run that, we can see the following error. We have Compilation terminated because no file or directory is found, which resolves into winternal.h. I have tried specifying a bunch of flags, for instance, lwinhttp, but this again failed with the same message. So after a little bit of debugging, I managed to find a version of the winternal.h and actually download it into my code. So for instance, I've already downloaded that. I'm going to keep post a link into the description so you can find it too. So I can just copy winternal.h into here. And now if I run the same command, now it's resolved. We have a bunch of warnings, but don't worry, it's quite fine. And now the code is there. Now that's the thing I was mentioning in that it's super specific. So based on what you're trying to, trying to do, you're gonna need to somehow include, download and tweak the settings a little bit so it can work. That's why I prefer to do it from Windows, but you know, it's possible to also cross compile. Now it's uh, of course needed to test the, pilot, the payload if it's gonna work. As mentioned, this code is only going to stage payload. So we would see uh, a HTTP request and nothing else. And now if I go back to my commando and actually refresh and download the a.exe file, I can run it in, inside my command prompt and we can indeed see 4060 bytes written successfully written because I failed to uh, type uh, checking on, on that process. But if we go back on the kind machine, we can indeed observe that we have 404 not found and the client remotely reached out to us. Now, as I mentioned, you need to be super specific and based on what you need your code to do, you would need to research your, your own, the book on your own and try to find a solution because when we are cross compiling, a lot of the times things are going wrong. I have a nice task for you and it's, I, I'm sure you're going to like it. Try to implement, let's say, direct Cisco or indirect Cisco using cross compilation. That's a challenging task and when you do it, you're going to be feeling pretty good and pretty native with cross completion. Thanks so much for the watching, that was the video, hope you enjoyed it, if that's the case make sure to smash that subscribe button, smash that like button and see you on the next one.